Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Iblesh and today we are going to take a closer look at the Grey Knights Combat Patrol box. We are going to talk about the price and savings, the minimum and maximum points values, how the army plays out of the box and if the box is worth it at all. If you enjoy the content, consider supporting Empire of War Games over on Patreon and leave a thumbs up as well as a subscription if you enjoy what you are seeing. Alright, let's get into the video. After a long wait of 7 months since it was first shown over on the Warhammer community website, the Grey Knights Combat Patrol is finally releasing. We had a lot of time to think the box over and the same applies to the Thousand Suns Combat Patrol box which we'll be releasing alongside this one. First let's go over the basics. After the recent price increases you will be paying 90 pounds, 120 euros, 150 dollars and the Australian price stays the same if you buy directly from GW, which I obviously don't recommend. Buy from third party stores because there you will save 20%. But yeah, the basic price is 90 pounds, 120 euros, 150 dollars, or 210 slash 230 Australian. So yeah, those are the prices I'm going to be using in the tables moving forward. And that price point is going to get you 12 miniatures in total. That doesn't sound like too much, but one of the models is thankfully quite chunky and expensive on its own. So let's go over the models. As our quote unquote default HQ choice of the box, we have a Librarian in Terminator armor. This one is an okay inclusion because all the other Grey Knights HQ choices are either Resin, Named or the Dread Knight, which is already included in the box. So admittedly, GW didn't have a lot of options here. Next, we have a five-man strike squad and this is basically half of a full Grey Knight strike squad box which usually gets you 10 miniatures and they will be your troops choice of the box although you can build them in many different ways. Three in total I think. Next we have a five-man terminator or paladin squad which is cool to have just because it shows that the combat patrol is meant to show the variety of the Grey Knights range which is admittedly not that big but having all the options available in just one box or a lot of them at least is quite cool and I think having terminators is definitely a good choice for of GW to just add them into the box. And last but not least we have the Nemesis Dread Knight which can also be an HQ or just a regular heavy support slot. These are still in a run for most played Grey Knight unit overall. They are still probably run like four times in competitive lists. So having one of them is definitely not bad and if you are going to play Grey Knights with like higher points values, say 1000 points, 2000 points, 3000 points, you're probably going to want more of them, probably somewhere between 1 and 3. So yeah, having one in here is definitely helpful. All in all, I'd say that the contents of the box make sense and it's just overall decent because it gives a new player a cool list and the ability to try things out. Well, veterans can get this box to just bolster their ranks across the board because this box doesn't have too much of anything. So a lot of Grey Knights players will probably already have a lot of strike squads, but having just a five-man squad in there and you know them being able to be assembled in three different ways keeps this box flexible and thus very interesting for veterans, which is a rare sight lately. So if you are a new Grey Knights player and you're looking into collecting them as your first army and if you're new to the hobby overall, here are a couple of things to keep in mind. First up, Grey Knights have a lot of HQ choices that are still only available in fine cast, which basically means they are trying to sell you a model in bad resin. And resin needs special care and attention. So whenever you look at the GW store, it's going to tell you if a model is resin or plastic. If you are going to buy a resin model just because you really like the rules or the lore, be prepared on what to do with it and look the appropriate YouTube videos to understand what you need to do because you are going to need to do a lot of fixing, fixing bubbles, straightening resin with hot water, you're probably going to need to clean the model and so on. So keep that in mind. Furthermore, Grey Knights also may seem a little bit outdated to the untrained eye just 
you know, if you put them next to all the primary stuff, they look a little bit older. But their release was in 2011, and I believe that the current models you would be buying right now, say from the Combat Patrol box, are still going to be up to date for quite a while. So just keep that in mind. But with GW, you really never know. But I think if you buy them now, you're going to at least be able to play with them uh, until 11th edition. You can play with them forever, but they are not probably not going to be updated until 11th edition, which is well over five years from now. So just keep that in mind. Next up, let's talk about the point that is probably going to be the most interesting one out of all of them for you, the savings. And as many have already noted, and as I've already said in the previous first impression video of this box, the savings are disastrous compared to literally any other combat patrol box out there. I think even the Death Watch combat patrol box, which is quite bad when it comes to savings, offers higher savings if we remove the upgrades proof from the calculation. So yeah, the savings are 13% below the average we like to see here on the channel, which is 33%. And Australia got hit particularly hard with only 17% savings. I think this is due to the Terminator Librarian costing less in Australia than in the US, which seems to happen a lot with HQ choices these days, and I don't quite understand how that is possible. But yeah, I double and triple checked, and the HQ, the Librarian Terminator, is cheaper in Australia than it is in the US. No idea why. If someone has an explanation for that, I would appreciate learning about it in the comments. Now make no mistake, GW knew this and thus they tried to create a box that gives a new player everything they need and thus saving 20% is better than saving nothing. But I personally would not recommend buying this box twice as GW likes to suggest unless you absolutely have a place for the second Terminator Librarian by either running two of them in one army or by using the other one for say another Space Marines chapters you might also be collecting or you might be thinking about in the future. So yeah, that model can be used in a wide variety of cases, most notably all the Space Marine chapters. So yeah, you could definitely find a place for the Terminator Librarian, but if you won't, then the savings at that point are not worth it and you can just buy whatever you want separately. Next up, I would like to quickly go over all the units included in the box and give a short comment. First up, the Librarian Terminator Armor or Brotherhood Librarian as it is called in the Grey Knights Codex. This guy is basically your generic HQ choice of the box and was included for several reasons. First, this guy is one of the cheaper HQ choices while still being a very capable Psyker who could cast a psychic power and warp shape if necessary. And warp shaping is kind of a cool thing that Grey Knights have. So yeah, keeping that in mind is important. Second, this guy is technically useful multiple times, even if you don't plan on using both of them for your Grey Knights army, since you will probably run more exciting HQs down the line. You could use the other one for another Space Marine chapter, as I suggested earlier. And the third reason is GW for some reason really likes to put dedicated HQs in their combat patrol boxes. Technically speaking, this box wouldn't have required another HQ choice since the Dread Knight can be a Grandmaster and thus fill the HQ slot. As it stands, the Brotherhood Librarian does exactly what you expect him to do for 105 points base as a Psycho in Terminator armor. Not more, but also not less. Next up is the Nemesis Dread Knight. As I already said, this model could also be a Grandmaster, so basically an HQ choice, which is a very popular build. But you technically want more Dread Knights anyway. As for this box, I would technically recommend assembling this model as a regular Dread Knight, although I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if there is a significant difference in the sculpt between a Grandmaster and a regular Dread Knight. And even if there is, your opponent probably won't know. Either way, it is the best model in the Codex, competitiveness run 3 or 4 of them, and you want at least 1 or 2 of them for your smaller Grey Knights armies, even for more casual games if you like the model. As is often discussed in Reddits, this particular model is a hate or love it situation simply because of the aesthetics, it has the baby carrier aesthetics, and thus, yeah, either you like it or you don't. All in all, I'm happy they put this one in the box. I think it is an essential model for the Grey Knights range, although it is not very fun and actually very oppressive to play against in a combat patrol game. So keep that in mind whenever you, you know, consider just buying the box and 
assembling it and putting it on a table for a quick game. Just if your opponent has no way to deal with the Nemesis Dread Knight, the game is for one going to be over very, very quickly. And the Nemesis Dread Knight is just going to do all the work themselves, especially if it's a Grandmaster. It's just a monster of a model and very, very scary and difficult to deal with. So keep that in mind. Next up, we have the Grey Knight Strike Squad. This particular kit is only half of a regular box, as I mentioned earlier. So you are getting five models that can be built in many different ways. Like, for example, the regular Strike Squad, which is a troops choice. And my recommendations, if this box is your entry for Grey Knights, they can also be built as a Purifier Squad, which is Elite, or an Interceptor Squad, which is Fast Attack. You can also assemble a few Elite or HQ characters using this kit. So it is insanely versatile. And considering the savings of the box, I would have liked GW to add the full 10 models, even if you could not run them all in a combat patrol game. GW looking at points rather than making a cool box and offering decent savings is understandable because profit, but also not very customer friendly in my opinion. So if you are new to Grey Knights, assemble them as a strike squad with whatever weapon you like the best and go from there. If you want to go the competitive option, you want to build interceptors and look for troop choice elsewhere or buy more Grey Knight Strike Squad boxes. And last but not least, we have the Paladins and Terminators. You honestly don't need to think too much on how to assemble these. If someone gets mad because you are using the Paladin heads despite running them as Terminators, that's a person you won't want to play against anyway. Other than that, both variants look very, very cool and are absolutely playable for any other format than competitive. So assemble them however you want and try them as both Paladins and Terminators and see what you like the best. Next, instead of going over all the rules, I will give you a short overview on what the army does, what you can expect when playing the army and how this particular box plays in a 500 points or 25 power level game. First up, let's take a quick look at the points and the power level this box offers. First up is the minimum points list, which looks to be right around 480 points and a whopping 33 power level. The power level is actually a big problem in this box, in my opinion. And yeah, if you play points, it's fine, but power level is a little bit more tricky. I will show you a list that is exactly 500 points and 25 power level in a bit. Next are the maximum points and those are right around 735 points or 35 power level, which is a lot for a combat patrol box. But since Grey Knights are so modular and since you can basically build three different squads out of the strike squad, I would probably be able to squeeze out even more points if I didn't have the combat patrol restrictions of requiring a troops option. So yeah, generally speaking, points are definitely not a big problem for this box and you could actually even play a 750 points game, even though it would be highly suboptimal, but it would work. Now for the 500 points list I played, here it is. I had to restrict myself quite a bit. I tried to squeeze a Grandmaster or Nemesis Dread Knight in there, but that would have meant that I would have to remove too many of the other models, which I didn't want to do. This list played quite well. The Nemesis Dread Knight is not particularly a fun model to play against on these low points. So make sure your opponent knows what they are getting into if you are just playing casually and for fun. The Dread Knight also carried the games for me. So yeah, that thing is a beast and made it a little bit more difficult to really understand and guard whether this list is actually effective or if the Dread Knight is doing all the heavy lifting. Meanwhile, the 25 power level list looked a little bit like this. I removed the Dread Knight deliberately to create a list that is more fun for 25 power level games and this list worked absolutely okay. You really don't have a lot of models on the table and if you lose a squad, it is basically over. So make sure to keep your units protected until they, get, they can get into range and destroy their target. It is possible to create other 25 power level lists with this box, but I sadly ran out of time when it comes to testing and playtesting and games. So yeah, as I said previously, if you use power level um, and if you play more casually on a crusade campaign, for example, try not including the Dread Knight at the very start uh, for games that are less than, I would say, 35 power level or maybe even 50 power level. Basically, the opposite applies to competitive. I doubt there are many 500 points competitive tournaments, but if you come across one, the Dread Knight is your best bet and it needs to be in your list. Uh, even possibly multiple times. So 
keep that in mind that thing can make its points back in one turn and if you are lucky uh, and if you position the dread knight correctly or the dread knights correctly uh, they can win you the game in two turns so yeah just keep that in mind now that you know the lists gray knights play exactly how you expect them to play you cast and deny quite a few powers so psychic powers uh, even at lower power levels or points values there is a lot of psychic casting happening and their melee damage output is just exceptional they are also quite durable if you go the extra mile and make sure that they have certain psychic powers on them um if you don't quite pay that much attention to taking cover and psychic powers they can be a lot squishier than you expect them to be they cost quite a bit of points and you don't run a lot of them but you still need to be careful they are not custodies the army wide rules like the waves are fun to use especially if you have a psyker that has the wave shaping ability on the battlefield which i highly recommend at all times lastly gray knights can be quite mobile and take your enemy by surprise which is a fun element in their gameplay be it teleporting or you know movement shenanigans via psychic abilities or army wide rules gray knights can move pretty quickly now if you are looking at this box from a competitive perspective and if you want to buy more or less a competitive list for grey knights you are looking at lists that basically say make room for four dread knights while the rest are just ob objective secured models or high mobility infantry in interceptors the fixation on a single unit happens a lot with armies that don't have a lot of data sheets and grey knights happen to be one of those armies so if you are looking for an army to experiment with Grey Knights are probably not exactly going to offer that, at least in a competitive environment. Ne next, let's look at upgrades. I wanted to offer a 1000 points list that is more or less geared towards casual or crusade and one that pushes this box more towards competitive. Now, what is competitive for Grey Knights currently is mostly them as Strat Knights, Inceptor Squads and Strike Squads. As such, I added another Dread Knight to the box and another strike squad so to round out the list you can see on the screen we use one of the dread knights as a grandmaster because the grandmaster is just a scary model overall and you know hits on twos and it's just a great model overall and we use the additional strike squad box for a five-man squad of interceptors and to fill out our strike squad to 10 models you can also check the list if you need loadout ideas for your dread knight or the librarian if you have any other questions regarding lists, loadouts, or if you have your own ideas, drop them in the comments below. So yeah, for the conclusion, this box has many problems, so let's start with them. First, this box as a start for a crusade army or for combat patrol games in a casual environment is quite problematic. Because playing against a dread knight at those points or power levels is just not fun at all. The people I played against will attest to that. And they will tell you how much it sucks. Um, second, the savings are abysmal and the lowest out of any combat patrol out there. Make of that what you will, you're still saving 20%. But yeah, it's quite a bit lower compared to all the other combat patrols. Some of the combat patrols even saving you upwards of 40%, just to put that into perspective. And third, Grey Knights are not quite beginner friendly but that's just my opinion there's a lot of movement required you have to have a lot of knowledge in every single phase you have to take advantage in every single phase um gray knights move quickly so the movement phase is important they cast a lot of psychic abilities they shoot and they do a lot of melee so yeah if you want to take full advantage of gray knights make sure to uh, get to know all the different phases and how to play them correctly now next to the positives upgrading this box is super easy as you have seen in my 1000 points upgrade example and you literally need another dread knight and a strike squad box and you are basically good to go and you can go for a more casual list or a more competitive list with that recommendation which is quite nice second th this particular combat patrol has a lot of points which is nice if you want to play 750 points games right from the start it won't be ideal but it'll work in a casual environment without any problems so if you have a friend who wants to play a slightly bigger game that is entirely possible with you just having this combat patrol and third the models included are all the kits you need if you want to start out with gray knights 
and i think even veterans that don't really have four dread knights will find this combat patrol somewhat interesting you could consider buying it twice but you really need to have a plan for the second librarian that is at least my opinion so all in all if I had to rate this box, I'd give it a clean 5 out of 10. It has its advantages, but it definitely has clear drawbacks as well. So ultimately, it's a decent box for new Grey Knights players to start their army, even if their savings are compared to other boxes. I also think that veterans are going to have their fun with this box, and thus a 5 out of 10 is fine, because I think it's just average. It averages out, uh, bad savings, decent... Um, you know, army composition and a lot of options in the box and the points are high and so on. So it's kind of, you know, balancing itself out. Now, what do you think about the box? Is it something that you're considering picking up? I would be interested to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you have any tips for new Grey Knights players, obviously drop them down there as well, because I think people are always trying to learn more about different armies and having more information out there is definitely always helpful. All right, I hope this was helpful to you and I see you in the next video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Bye bye.